What is up, everybody, from our at t 5G virtual studios? Welcome on into Group Chat presented by at t 5G. I'm Susanna Collins, joined by Stephen Keel. We have so much to talk about, buddy, because uh, not only are we going to be previewing some matches for this weekend, but can we talk about the wild ride that was midweek MLS games? I, it was nuts. It was what Wednesday, eight <laughs> games, had like 33 <laughs> goals. Uh, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But listen, we before we dive into, I'm so happy you brought this up. Can mm-hmm. we talk San Jose <laughs> trophies? Hat yes, ride? the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we I, can. It, it, it's got to be one of the greatest, like the the three quality, the goals and how the quality of the, each goal individually is mind blowing, right? We you know, yes. when when MLS is getting love on Sports Center top ten, you know that something big yeah. happened, okay? Because two of his three goals were featured on top ten, and I yeah. could not, and and they were incredible. It was like first the one where he just basically like breaks the defender's leg and just cut. I mean, the guy just. I, that, my favorite part is in that shot. You see him just like turn around. And look, and it's like, yep, he knows what's what's about to happen. And then the Olympico. I mean, yeah. like, my God, like what? But the the, right. the the thing that is so so tragic and uh, Shakespearean about this whole story is that um, San Jose didn't even win the game. I know. <laughs> I know. A last minute goal from Rubio for RSL, and they lost the game. But boy, boy, was it fun to watch. I just, I'm, was, I'm still getting over it. What an individual performance, right? I mean, listen, exactly. They don't get the win. Super disappointed by that. <laughs> but listen, his his individual highlight tape just got a <laughs> lot, I lot know. better. Seriously, for, for years to come, we shall be uh, enjoying the replays of those goals because they were mwah, many feek, many feek. Mm-hmm. All good, right. Good. Uh, speaking of many feek, how about League's Cup? How about that League's Cup final that is going to feature the Seattle Sounders Let's and go. Club Leon uh, Wednesday, September 22nd in Allegiant Stadium in Vegas, 10 p.m. Eastern, ESPN2, Unimas, 2 DNA. First of all, that stadium, holy moly. I was like, man, maybe, maybe, maybe they'll send me for this game. Alas, <laughs> not, not happening because I'm just dying to see that place. It looks absolutely sick. Um, but this was, I'm so excited. I was so hoping, <laughs> hoping that we would have MLS team in, yes. in the final and thank you, Seattle Sounders and Raul Rui Diaz, who just, I mean, he was, he was the the man of the match in, uh, the quarterfinals. He's the man of the match in the semis. I mean, this guy, it was such a back and forth game keel and they right. had, they, each team had chances. And then it was just Raul Ruiz Diaz just found that moment um, right at the end of the game. And that's what he does. That is what he does yeah. for Seattle time and time again. He shows up in those big moments. It's just, it was bonkers. And I'm, I'm super pumped about it. The, the, the question I have is where where are we building the Rui Diaz statue right out there? You know, like where where is that going? Because listen, like you said, this guy he scores he scores clutch goals, he scores big time <sighs> goals. It's no reason, uh, you know, he is one of the most feared strikers in, in MLS. Um, but what a performance! You're right. And then you know, for Brian Schmetcher, listen, we keep saying giving credit to him, giving credit to him, but he just keeps getting mm-hmm. the most out of his teams, right? Juggling lineups, no Ladero, yeah. no new who in this one still finds a way. Uh, their new signing Leo Chu gets in the game, gets the assist for Rui Diaz. So look, it, it's, it's almost like groundhog day. It's like, yep, there's another final the Seattle Sounders are in that final. Um, and so come next Wednesday, I think we're all going to be rooting for the Sounders, but here's the question though is, Oh you know, boy. All of MLS wants, you know, this victory, obviously. Yeah. But if you're like a, a like a, a Vancouver Whitecaps fan, a Timbers fan, are you are you Ooh, for the Yeah, that's a, I know exactly. You kind of have to totally put aside any sort of bias yeah. that you have and just cheer for MLS. I feel like now I don't know. I like I can I'm I have a hard time believing that a Portland Timbers fan is gonna be watching that match and being like, come on, Seattle. <laughs> you know what I mean? That just feels I, a little that feels uh, foreign and I wrong. Think- I think their dislike for Seattle outweighs their yes, like for MLS. Absolutely. So like, no, no, no. Absolutely. But anyways, for right. us, us neutrals <laughs> and, and the likes, we are all all rooting for the Sounders. 
uh, next week. 100%. Uh, they want more trophies. Schmetzer wants yeah. more trophies. And uh, they they could very well take one home. Um, uh, guys, just a reminder, that game Wednesday, September 22nd, 10 p.m. Eastern, ESPN2, Unimas 2 DNA. And then after the game... Join us for our League's Cup post-game show. Um, it's going to take place right after the final whistle. You can find it on our MLS YouTube, Twitter, um, all, those, all those channels, all those platforms. But mm -hmm. we'll be breaking down, breaking down the uh, League's Cup final action and hopefully celebrating a Seattle Sounders victory. Let's hopefully. hope so. Fingers crossed. Okay. We had we got the good news in. Um, now let's, you know, we're going to, I'm just going to take a moment. Take a brief pause Man. because our our the MLS dreams of winning Concacaf Champions League, um, sadly, sadly, have come to an end once again. Yes. Once again, yeah. oh, Philadelphia Union, and you know what? They gave it a heck of a heck yeah. of a good try, but they they end up losing two 0 to uh, Club America. They, they hung in there, Keel. You know, yeah. it was it and it was a very contentious game. There was just mm -hmm. a lot of emotions flying around now. Has to be pointed out that they entered this match um, in a two-goal deficit. Yeah. So they, you know, they had some ground to make up already. And they hung in there. They really, really did. They had some incredible chances. I mean, Ochoa had to make some yeah. wild saves. Um, right. I, I believe it was Shabilko that uh, kind of just sent him full, full extension. But um, you know, Club America ends up getting two late goals and, and the rest is history, as uh, as we say, a valiant effort. But my hope for uh, Philadelphia now is that they, you know, they can just kind of push this aside and focus on the rest right. of the season. Because right now, they are not above the playoff line, and there are, you know, there are other goals and other fish to fry, as they as they say. These are the reigning supporters' shield right. winners, and so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this whole, you know, we talk about the CCL hangover yeah. sometimes. Um, with MLS teams, and I'm really hoping that the Philadelphia Union can avoid that. Yeah, and I think Jim Curry <laughs> and everyone else hopes that as well. But yeah, yeah, you look at this game, and it, and we talk about Groundhog Day. It's just kind of another, you know, it's another early, you know, another run MLS run cut short. And it was going to be a tall task, right? Yeah. You're playing Club America, who's top of the table right now in League MX, is undefeated. Um, you're down two goals. You, you know, you need to score goals and. I think this game, like you said, it, it was contentious. It was great effort the, uh, from Philadelphia. Just kind of missing was that that final that final finishing yeah. touch, which has eluded them a little bit all season. So um, unlucky at times, um, but again, maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe, maybe next, next year. year. Maybe I'm just next trying to say, year. Like, I, yeah, I think next year. Like, listen, at some point, <laughs> MLS is going to win, right? At some point. MLS is going to win, and and I, it's just like hopefully it's next year, and we can kind of uh, mm -hmm. get over this this, this right. hurdle, if you will. Um, but yeah, uh, a little bit of a bummer for Philadelphia, but like you said, all eyes on on league play now. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and I appreciate the optimism, Stephen Keel. You always you always bring it. Um, all we can hold our hopes on. Absolutely. Okay, time now uh, for a little segment we are going to call group text because yep. uh, you know it's group chat. It's a show. And one of the one of the the hot topics, the big storylines in MLS right now is obviously the New England Revolution. Okay. Like because mm -hmm. this is just this is there is the New England Revolution and kind of everyone else in yeah. is sort of my my estimation. All right. They're sitting comfortably in the top spot of the East since week five. Okay. Since week five. All right. We are now in like week 26 or whatever it is. 14 points ahead of Nashville. Who are in mm -hmm. second place and nine points ahead of Sporting Kansas City, who are second in the Supporter Shield race. Okay, so this, I mean, these are ginormous gaps between yes. one and two. They are on pace. They need 18 points in nine games mm -hmm. left to set the MLS points record, which we mm -hmm. saw set um, by LAFC in 2019, only two years ago, 72 mm -hmm. points. Okay, so this is completely within their reach. Yes. My question to you, Stephen Keel, number one, does it even matter to them? Like a guy like Bruce Arena, is he, is, does he want to break this record 
Or is he going to maybe, because they've got some room, maybe rest some guys ahead of the playoffs. Maybe, I don't want to say take their foot off the pedal, but, you know, they are in a very, very good position. What do you, Mm -hmm. do you think that they are going to break this record and do they want to? I I, I think, look, it's one of those is, everybody's competitive. Bruce Arena is probably one of the most competitive guys. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think ultimately his goal is those, those trophies, right? I think he, you know, he looks at the supporter shield and then obviously MLS cup as as the ultimate goal. And those are his main priorities. Now, look it, it, along the way, if they capture the record, um, you know, most points in a season, they'll take that too. So yeah. I, I don't foresee them taking their foot off the pedal and I, I don't foresee them, you know, kind of, you know, resting a, a, a bunch of guys that, you know, sometimes you see in the NFL where they, just, they sit all their starters. I don't see that happening. Yeah. Um, and as far as will they do it, I think they have an, a great, great chance to do so, right? Um, we've seen them rip off four or five wins in a row. They're, you know, they've won 10 out of the last 12 um, currently. And a lot of those wins have come without Carlos Heel, uh, arguably their, their best player, MVP front runner. So, um, and in the rare occasion, rare occasion, they do take a, an L or a loss. They never follow it up with another one. They always no. find ways to get points in that next game. So you look at the team and it's it just, there's so many game changers, you know, front to back, Matt Turner, what a season he's having, um, you know, Tejon Buchanan, uh, Matt Polster even, and, you know, obviously, and then you get to the front for books, uh, boo, uh, Bo, excuse me. And, uh, heel it's, it, they're just loaded all over. You have Bruce Arena at the helm guiding yeah. this team. So I think there's a great chance that they pick up those uh, 18 points in the last nine games. Um, and I think it's one of those that, yeah, the, the guys in the locker room, they're obviously aware of this. Sure. Everyone's competitive. You want to, you know, be the best. And, uh, yeah, you want to go out and, and, and get that record if you can. I Yeah, I mean, I think – I feel like Bruce Arena kind of just, like, keeps it very much, like – buttoned up you know like i think he i I think he plays it really cool but he wants this and i we had him on the call up a few weeks ago and we asked him like how good this team was because he's obviously coached some historically fantastic phenomenal teams and mls and he was like i don't even know and he's like, well, no, at the end of the season, basically right. kind of like alluding to the fact, like, let's see where we finish. Let's see, you know, if we are mm-hmm. the supporter shield winners, if we are MLS cup champions. Um, and so he's kind of, you know, he, he's, he's going to let the results sort of dictate that for him, which makes very, yeah. a lot of sense. And also like very true to Bruce fashion. Yes. Um, but I do think he kind of, I don't think he, like, I think if in an interview he was asked like, Oh, are you going after this points thing? Like, he'd be like, you know, get out of town, go, go. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like, no, I, I, I think, I don't think it's one of those is they're, you know, uh, outspoken, like we're going for this record because I think it's, you know, their, their focus is on, I think, you know, finishing the exactly. regular season and, and, and basically having MLS cup go through Gillette stadium. I think that's their first goal. And then obviously the ultimate goal, which I think is everyone's ultimate goal is, is winning MLS cup at the end of the year. So, um, and if they get the most points in the regular season, yo, a little feather in the cap, if you will. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. In the cap. All right. Well, on that note, let's take a look at the standings, shall we? Um, Eastern Conference up first. Obviously, there's New England. Um, but hey, don't look now. Atlanta United sitting yeah. above, above the playoff line in seventh place on 33 points. I mean, this is this is this looks like an entirely different team than we saw a few weeks ago. The team that had like five L's in a row. I mean, it's right. crazy. I Gonzalo Pineda has done an incredible job. And even before then, you know, they just, they, they've turned this around. Um, Joseph is back and scoring goals. Barco looks completely reinvigorated. So this is don't do not sleep on it. Man United. I think some people maybe had written them off for this season. Oh no, 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 no. They're playing some mighty good soccer right now. Also, um, I just want to point out Miami for a hot second yes. for a hot second was in fifth place this week. Okay. Like it, it was, it was wild. I couldn't believe it when I looked at the standings. I was like, how did this happen? But a huge amount of credit to them because they are fighting. And right now they are back in eighth. So they're just one point below that playoff line. Um, but they've been playing incredible soccer as well. Mm-hmm. They really had a, a significant turnaround. So it's, I just, this is just, it's so much fun. I feel like outside of like new England who have just been so steady, it's just this like crazy roller coaster right. in in the east, and I um, I could not be more here for it. It's 
Stephen Keel. It's, also, it's I want to give some love to DC too because we had um, <laughs> we had Hernan Lozada on the call up, and like they are, I, they are such a fun team, and he they have such a great attitude right now. This sort of like, why not us? We're the underdogs. We love it. And they are uh, sitting in fifth place right now. So, and, it, and it's good to give a love because look, I mean. Look, the difference between hosting a playoff game and not I even know. making the playoffs at all is three points. One weekend you get a win, the other teams maybe don't get the results, and, and you, uh, you're jumping up and down the table. So this is going to be fun <laughs> to, to watch as it comes down the wire. But Buckle out up. west, it's a little bit mixed as well. So mm-hmm. you know, Sporting KC jumps to the top of the standings. This past week was good for them. 2-0 win over Chicago and a 4-0 win over Minnesota has them in first place. Um the team, I tell you what, kind of like Atlanta jumping above there. Yeah. How about LAFC, right? Three wins in a row. That will get you uh, jumping uh, some places uh, in the play uh, in the standings. But Christian Arango looks like the real deal. Mm-hmm. Five goals in the last four go- uh, games. Uh, Bob bradley has got to be excited with how they're playing right now. Big, big <laughs> game this Sunday against Portland. The team there uh, just one point behind in this Yeah, team. huge, huge, huge. Yeah, it feels like, you know, that alternative universe that we were living in where Atlanta United and LAFC were, like, <laughs> yeah. not good. It's kind of like, you know, we've corrected ourselves. Like, here we go. <laughs> like, it, all, it all works itself <laughs> out one way or the other. Exactly, exactly. All right, uh, Keel, how about we get to some game previews? Let's do weekend. it. We some great ones with with, oh, a, yeah. with some pretty big Very implications on the line. And we are starting out with uh, Miami taking on the New York Red Bulls. Uh, that game two nights, 7 p.m. Eastern, FS1, Box Deportes, and DAZN. Now, we talked about Miami uh, when we were looking mm-hmm. at the standings there. Like I said, for a hot second, they were in fifth. They are now just one point below the playoff line, sitting in, in eighth right now. They have won five of their last six matches, Stephen Keel. They have three wins yes. in a row. Um, and this this turnaround that we have seen from them is is pretty remarkable, okay? We've seen the DPs finally kind of yeah. stepping up and producing. The defense has suddenly gotten really, really good. They were leaking goals for a while. Yeah. And now they've got, I think they've got three shutouts in a row. Um, mm-hmm. It's crazy. So Phil Neville, I saw this quote um, in a Miami Herald article. And I just thought this was really interesting because you're, I mean, you're looking for sort of like, you know, what happened? What changed? What changed? Right, right, right. Phil Neville said this. He said, I always refer to a quick quote I saw from a great American coach, Bill Belichick. He has one slogan in his football club that is just do your job. And that's what right. we have done over the last six to eight weeks. And so I think, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot that goes into um, an improved play that we have right. seen from from Miami, but I think you know, I think Phil Neville has really done a, a remarkable job of mm-hmm. literally mm-hmm. getting guys to do mm-hmm. exactly what their role is. You know, they I feel like it's finally it's finally yeah. come together. They know where they are supposed to be. You know, there's going to be he's, this is his first year as a, as as head coach. You know, adjusting to adjusting to MLS, adjusting to that to that system has finally has finally come together. Um, but it's I mean considering that only a few short weeks ago, they were literally at the bottom of the right. Eastern Conference standings, Keel, to where they are now. It's it's pretty pretty shocking. It's it, it really, right? This was, a, like you said, a team that lost six in a row, including that 5-0 loss um, to New England. Yeah. Where it was like, oh my gosh, like everything is not good. But like, you, I mean, you can't, I don't think we can give enough credit to Phil Neville and what he's done to keep that locker room together um, mentally, uh, tactically, uh, and, and listen, he made some some tough decisions. He mm-hmm. made some big calls, and uh, you know, he went from kind of a, a, a captain's committee, if you will, um, to just having Gregory as their captain, who I think has kind of led them in the way that they they want to uh, be led. So, listen, like you said, defensively they've cleaned it up uh, tremendously. They're getting, you know, Pizarro, Iguain are scoring, are, are coming up big when they need them to, um, and it's not always pretty. <laughs> so, uh, some of the win, but listen, they're winning, and three points is three points, exactly. Um, and so that this is a, a a big game for them, and Huge. I think you look kind of on the other side is is kind of you know I think you see Miami maybe trending is definitely trending up, up. but kind of other side is the Red Bulls. It's like whoa, man, you know, and 
another game, you know, uh, they lose to Columbus 2-1, a game in which they have the lead. Yeah. Um, that was their 21st point drop from a winning position, uh, which is the most in, in MLS this season. And, and it's just crazy. As you look at the games, as they're in these uh, games, a lot of a lot of these games, they have the lead. Yeah. And, and you know, they uh, ways to find ways to, you know, maybe they, they draw games or they don't pick up all three points, which is, is coming back to, to haunt them this um, way. And, and, and right now, it, it's, you know, it's looking bleak right you know, i think we're so used to to, <laughs> to the red bulls being in yeah. the playoffs right 11 straight seasons and it's really in jeopardy right now so it, it's not you see the quotes coming out from from oh my the God. team after the locker uh, after the game and it's just it's not a good situation right now but Susanna, you know we're all about positivity yes here, right? we are keel so how do we turn this into a positive is <laughs> they do have some games in hand uh-huh they have been competitive. They have been in these matches. And if they can just somehow find ways to close out games, which is easier said than done, MLS is weird. And we it see is. teams rattle off two, three wins, and they jump in <laughs> up the standings. Easier, sa- again, said than done. But MLS again, it's just weird. I love it. it. MLS is weird. But I, I think, it, yeah, you just look at this team, and, and um, you just you want them to be able to, yeah. to find ways to finish the games. It's um it is it's strange we are in uncharted territory with the the Red Bulls struggling like this and you I mean this is a team you used to play for you know yeah. kind of what they expect uh from that right. that club and that organization they expect to be in the playoffs they expect to be a contender every single year and so it's really really strange um that they have been struggling so much this year and then you know mm-hmm. you mentioned the quotes like you know Jared Struber at the end, he basically said he he said he was speechless. He was like, "The situation, right. it's not easy. It's a very disappointing season. I'm speechless." And it's like, if you're if the coach is speechless and literally right. you know, has nothing else to say, like that is worrying. But you know, I again, like just to reiterate your point, like there is there's quite a bit of soccer left. They have some games in hand. As quickly as it it can kind of go south, it can go back up again. Right. And so I just, you know, there it's a young team. It's a it's a and they're they're only getting more and more experience. If they right. are able to get a few results um consecutively, you, you just don't know what can happen. So right. huh, we shall see. We shall see. Try to stay. It should be a fun game, though. I tell you what, it will be a fun game. It will absolutely be a fun game. Um, So tune in tonight, your Friday night MLS action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Next up, Stephen Keel, we have Atlanta United taking on DC United. That is Saturday, three thirty p.m. Eastern. Univision, Judiani, Twitter, and DAZN. Okay. So we talked about the remarkable turnaround of Atlanta that we have seen. They are coming off a 4-0 win Mm -hmm. over Cincinnati. Joseph Martinez gets a brace in this one. Uh, Barco just look He literally looks like a new player under Gonzalo Pineda. They have won six of their last seven games. Um, It's just, it's really, really incredible that in such a short period of time, and, you know, we talked about Phil Neville and sort of, you know, how the growing pains that you experience as a, a first year head coach and then you know obviously Pineda is a guy who was so entrenched in MLS he has been you know he was his right, a player yeah. for Seattle and then an assistant coach for Schmetzer and I think it's not a surprise that we have seen his team click so quickly because he knows he knows this league and it, it, the system that he has been playing is benefiting guys like Barco is a perfect example you know yeah. like finding ways for him to be in positions where he can score goals you know like it's just it's just a really I, I I give so much credit to Pineda, and I think that his his years in MLS are a, a glowing example of why we are seeing from Atlanta right now. Absolutely, and I think that's why so pe- people are so high on this hire. Um, and I think you know you can see why what Atlanta did to go get him because of what he brings to the table. And, 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 and essentially, I look at Atlanta is they're getting the best from their best players. You mentioned Barco, um, the new, their new signing, uh, who scored the first goal, Luis Ararujo. Um, just, you know, that his goal, the way he, you know, he holds up the ball, he glides past players in the finishing touch. I think had a lot of Atlanta fans kind of reminiscing of, of the glory days with, with Miguel Amiron as well. And mm-hmm. Joseph gets two goals, um, in this game. And I mean, listen, first of all, hat Joseph, most goals in his first 100 games, 85 goals, in his first 100 games at MLS. I, listen, I mean, it's another record for a guy who seems to hold so many records. So, um, but they're getting, and I think they're getting the best 
out of these players. Um, and it's showing with the results. But on the other side, you talked to uh, about DC United getting the most out of his players. Oh, my goodness. Um, I know we've, we've, we've talked at length, and you, uh, everyone should go listen to the call-up when we guys had uh, <laughs> Lasada on. He's such an interesting guy. And yeah. you just like listen to hear him speak. It, it's fascinating. And it's one of those guys you're like, I really like this dude. I like the way he sees the game. Um, but listen, Ola, hat trick, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know we, we talk about Ola Kamara and people want to say, oh, you know, but the dude leads the league with goals scored and people are like, oh, how many PKs? Well, he's got seven. He's had seven attempts and he scored seven. Yeah, he's exactly. Also, spot. like people say, oh, it's PK. It's not easy. Like, no. score PK is like not as good. Listen. First, simple first of all, thing. all goals are the same, right? All they, they, they all goals count the same. And if you have a guy on your team that you know is money from the spot, that is a huge, huge exactly, and exactly with the, the style with you know with the way DC plays, where you know it's so like you know organized chaos is, is like they want yeah. to say you know around the boxes. You're gonna get these opportunities for penalties, and if you have a guy who can step up and and, and drill it, like that's huge. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, this game, I am I am super excited for a big sip, a six point game. Two teams, good form. Two teams separated by just one point in the standings. Yeah, um, it should be good. But listen, I got to ask you. We yeah. talked about Ola. Do you MVP? Oh, is that, is that too far a stretch? <laughs> what do we? Where do we net out on that one? I mean, what? I think if you are netting sixteen goals at this point in the season, you have to be in that conversation. At right least in the conversation, right? Right. How could he yeah. not be? How could he not be? And and DC are in the playoffs right now. If the game mm-hmm. season ended right now, DC would make the postseason. Um, and I, I yeah, a hundred percent, he should be at at the very least be in that conversation because yeah. that's um, that's a lot of goals. Just newsflash for and he's everyone. and he's doing it with like like five hundred less minutes. Than yeah, a lot of exactly. The, at least you know a lot. Of, he's played the least you know the least amount of minutes of the guys at the near the top of the stand. Uh, the golden boot race. So listen, I think it's fair to have him to have this conversation like you and I are. I agree. And I'm glad that you and I are having this conversation. Let's get, <laughs> let's get it trending. Let's start this <laughs> with the pod a little. Um, another thing that I'm looking forward to at this game, Stephen Keel is um, ah, there. This was, this was an incredible conversation that we had with Julian Gressel um, about uh, a young boy named Owen Clemmy who Julian befriended when he was still playing with Atlanta. Um, and he had a very rare form of cancer, but he kind of, he, Owen's family sort of opened up their, their arms to, to mm-hmm. Julian and his wife. And um, he went trick or treating with them last year. Um, and sadly, so sadly, Owen lost his battle to cancer back in July. Um, but I believe we are going to see a, a tribute to him um, at some point during this game, mm-hmm. which is going to be really, really special yeah, um, because okay. DC, as Julian Gressel moved on to DC, he, you know, sort of kept in touch with the family. Mm-hmm. So he became very much a part of, of that club as well. Um, and so, you know, as September is kick childhood cancer mm-hmm. month, um, I think it's just, just a really, really beautiful tribute to a incredible young life that was taken way too soon. And on that note, just a reminder, guys, it is still kick childhood cancer month. So keep tweeting, keep using that hashtag. So continental tire can donate money to an incredibly good cause. Um, Yeah. It's just one of those, uh, you know, perspective, perspective Uh moments that I was just going to say that that's, that's it. We, we talk about these games and being, you know, such must win and so much important, yeah. but you know, it's moments like this to kind of bring you back to um, what's really important in life. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this tribute um, from, from both clubs uh, should be a, a special moment and, and one that, you know, definitely just kind of makes you take a step back and, and kind of just think about things. hundred percent. Well said, buddy. Um, okay. Moving along to our next game preview. <laughs> oh boy. Houston. Houston taking on Dallas, 9.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday um, on ESPN+. Plus. Okay, so this is uh, obviously the fight for El Capitan, the, yes. uh, the iconic cannon, if you will. <laughs> um, it's also a Copa Tejas uh, game. Mm-hmm. Dallas, Dallas is interesting, okay? Mm-hmm. This is something that you can speak to. I know you follow this team closely as, uh, you know, since you used to play for them and all that. 
heads up everyone um but they're <laughs> they're currently in 10th place okay they're they're six points off the playoffs right now they're coming off what was a, a really crazy awesome game um a yeah. three draw against nycfc which was a really good result um, nycfc is a is a good team um, but lucci Gonzalo, their head coach, says that, mm -hmm. you know, Dallas needs to learn how to finish games. It's like they, they're they right there. They're, yeah. you know, they're always in games, but they don't necessarily have, they, they can't quite finish it out. And I, I want to get your your take on this um, because, you know, you do. You look at that team and you're like, God, they're talented, especially you see what guys like Jesus Ferreira and Ricardo yeah. Pepe are, are capable of doing. But, you know, is it, is it, is it a youth problem? Are they too young? Is it just like growing pains? What What do you think the issue is with with Dallas right now? And, and that's funny. You want we talk about you know a youth problem, and I <laughs> think it's also look at it like you know this team. If you look at the the players, you know that they, that have been in their system and have moved on just the last couple, you know this season, last season, Tanner, uh, you know Testament, Reggie Cannon, Chris Richards, Brian Reynolds, you know quality quality players that were with them, and now obviously they've gone on. Um, overseas and everything um, but you know it, it is a little bit about having that experience mm -hmm. it's a little bit uh mentality as well amongst the group is kind of saying listen it, we we, we got to find ways to close these games out and it's ways that um you know almost like a refuse to lose type situation find ways to win sure. however you want to say it um but it's got to come down to is like no listen and that, and it starts from from the captains it obviously starts from lucci all the way down and is what they're preaching um but yeah, you know, you just got to have a mentality that we're going to find a way to, to close out a game, um, digging deep. And it comes with experience. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I look at this team as well as, is, I mean, how much, how exciting is this team, right? It, it, how exciting and how spoiled are we that it's like, oh, Ricardo Pepe. Yep. You guys going to, you know, be the next great star in American soccer. Oh, it's another homegrown from uh, Dallas. Oh, Jesus Ferreira. Yep. Another great player. Another homegrown. I mean. We, I think we've just become almost spoiled at like, oh, like, you know, yeah, Dallas, there's another homegrown. There's, yep, another player for the national team. So, but when I look at Dallas versus Houston, um, you know, I think Dallas can cause a lot of problems with those yeah. two players up front. Uh, obviously, their individual quality speak for themselves, but the chemistry that Pepe and Ferreira have, right? They, they have a relationship on yeah. the field, friends off the field. They grew up in the academy together. Uh, they understand each other's movements. They're, they're creative with the, how they get into each other's spa the spaces. Um, and then they also work for each other defensively where they press um, and they cover each other very, very uh, effectively. So I think the combo of them will cause Houston problems. But listen to Houston. Hey. Uh, we, we talk about teams. <laughs> listen, you go for, from not winning uh, a game uh, in 16 tries to now you got four points in your last two matches. Like, hey. Okay. Hey. Okay. Come on. You see, yeah. We see you. We see you. We see you. Right. And, <laughs> and listen, I mean, they've – it hasn't all been bright for Houston. No. One of the bright spots has been uh, Fafa Pico. Yeah. Six goals in his last seven games. He actually scored in both their previous meetings against Dallas. Uh, Houston, 10 points out of a playoff sp uh, spot. They haven't won away from home. So these games at home, you have, especially now uh, getting this late in the season, it's a must. It's a, it's a yeah. must win for both these teams. Um, both te teams wanting to get above the playoff line. So uh, big one. El Capitan. Yeah. Who doesn't love a cannon? Who doesn't love a cannon? You know? Who doesn't love it's a it's a really impressive cannon too when you it see is it in person. Cannon. I was like, oh man, yeah. this is legit. This is this is a cannon. Um, for those of you that have not seen El Capitan in person. Uh, but this is a perfect segue to our 22 under 22 presented by Body Armor Stockwatch player spotlight because we are going to talk about one. Jesus Ferreira, who we have mentioned in this conversation, six goals, five assists in 1,451 minutes this season. Okay. As we said, he is a Dallas homegrown player. We signed back in 2016. Now, Ricardo Pepe is the guy that gets all the love and the headlines, I feel like, because of all the attention that he is is garnering with the U.S. men's national team and what mm -hmm. he's doing there, um, in addition to his play for, for FC Dallas. But, you know, Jesus Ferreira is another glowing example of the success that uh, FC Dallas Academy products have had and just a testament to that program and that Academy, Stephen Keel, what do you, what impresses you most about Jesus Ferreira? Uh, there, there's what's there's everything really, you know, everything you look at a, a player who's versatile, he can play 
pretty much anywhere um, midfield and up front. Uh, he can score goals. He can set them up. He can score in a variety of ways off the dribble uh, through combinations. And then he has that ability and the vision to find that final ball. Um, for me, I, I kind of look at it, you know, what's his best position? I think we've seen him have such great success, kind of almost in that false nine, yeah. if you will, um, kind of off one of the strikers where um, he's so good at, at kind of dropping off the front line, finding uh, pockets of space. He's comfortable in, in 360 degree situations. Um, and then again, he has that vision and that ability to pick that final pot, the pass of, of the cutting wingers and, and different things. So I love what he does going forward. Uh, he scores goals. He sets them up, but also defensively, right? He, yeah. He's, he's not shy to, uh, to, to put in the work on both sides of the ball. So I think we're just going to continue to see him get better and better. And, and you mentioned that relationship with Pepe and, and in the performances he's had, it wouldn't shock me at all to see him, you know, Greg Berhalter call him in mm-hmm. for, for some of the, the World Cup qualifier coming up. You know, I think he's, he's in great form. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I think he, he, he's exactly what we could use and what we need. And um, his performances have shown that. Do you think Greg Berhalter watches this show? I'm sure he's a big group chat fan. Oh, yeah. I mean, cause if he if he was a smart man, he would be listening to the wise and sage words of Steve Keel. I'm I just, just want to say is how saying. do we get in the group chat <laughs> with Greg Berhalter? Do you think do you think that's that should be our goal? Is can we get Greg Berhalter in a group chat? <laughs> oh God, that listen, listen, never say never, Stephen. Never Keel. say never. I believe in us. I believe in us. All right, we got one more game preview to get to, and that is uh, a Sunday matchup between Philadelphia and Orlando, 4 p.m. Eastern, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and DAZN. Okay, so we talked about Philly a little bit earlier in the show, yeah. coming off that that disappointing CCL loss to Club America. Yeah. But but you know it was a it was a valiant valiant effort. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I, my hope for them, and I said it before, I'm just right now, they, you know, they're out of playoff contention. They're in ninth, ninth place, 32 mm-hmm. points on the season. And I am just hopeful that they will be able to kind of collect themselves, focus on the rest of the MLS regular season and get, find their way above, above that, that playoff line, because I love this team. I love Jim yeah. Curtin. I think they are better yeah than the results that they have gotten. Um, especially when you look at that, that roster. Um, it, yeah. It's just, it's one of these where I, 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 again, I just don't think the results are very indicative of the type of team that they have. And I would love to see them in the postseason. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you talk about that, the CCL hangover, right? They put so much, you know, energy and preparation into that match and it doesn't go their way. Is it how much left in the tank, you know, do they have? And you listen to, and it, it can be go one way, you know, a couple of ways is either, you know, they've drained themselves and it's just not going to, you know, like we've seen, um, you know, back in 2018 with, with Toronto uh, and their CCL run ended. And then after that mat, uh, game, or you can say, look, like, like you said, that the energy was there, the, the, the fight and stuff. Can they carry that now mm-hmm. to league play? And like you said, kind of, you know, some of the results haven't gone their way. Can they find ways to, to get those results, uh, positive results? And I think it's, we talked about a lot of them. It's just, you know, kind of that final pass, that final yeah. uh, the goal and everything. Um, you know, just they've scored more than one goal just once in the last nine games. So finding that final uh, finishing touch will be huge. But I, I think you speak, you listen, like everyone, I think we all love Jim Curran, how, what he's done with that club. Um, but I think you're going to see, you know, kind of them, springboard almost from that uh yeah. from performance uh against america and then on the other side orlando as well kind of in a little two losses in a row they yeah nine nine goals They've cooled in the last down. Three games. yeah i mean it's it's tough you know their captain nani gets a red card it's always going to be an uphill battle um but this is a big stretch for them right you know Huge. they got a, this is the first uh of three road games after this philadelphia game they got new england nashville on the road two of the better clubs in mls so these are some some big uh, big games for Orlando. So three, it seems like every game is a big three points, <laughs> almost a six pointer. These teams are so close in the standings. Um, yeah, it, it's like, but, but I love it. And, and this yeah. should be a fun match. Well, I mean, it's, it's true though. And I, I literally in my notes uh, for this game, I literally have an asterisk, big three points for both. Yeah. Um, as Philadelphia is trying to get into the playoffs, Orlando trying to stay in that top four position right. so that they get home field, but they have, you know, they've kind of, they've, they've cooled off a little bit. I'm not, 
super concerned about Orlando. I've been no. very high on them all, yeah. all season long. Um, but again, when when there is uh, so much on the line, especially at this point in this season, I just think it, it makes for some really exciting soccer games. So I Absolutely. think this is going to be, it's gonna be fun. That one's going to be fun. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the schedule for the weekend because we have some pretty awesome games in store for you all. On Friday, of course, we've got that's tonight, Miami, New York, 7 p.m. Eastern on FS1, Fox Deportes, and DAZN. And Saturday, that Atlanta, D.C. matchup at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, Univision, through the NA, Twitter, and DAZN. We also have New England, Columbus. That's going to be fun, too. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. And then, flip it over. We're looking at some games. That Houston, Dallas, that Texas Derby game, that is going to be happening. Um, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. ESPN plus end zone. And then Sunday, we've got some, some great ones as well. Philadelphia against Orlando, 4 p.m. Eastern on uh, ESPN, ESPN, Portes, or ESPN plus the zone. Um, and then Portland LAFC. That's going to be a fun one too. 7.30 p.m. Eastern FS1, Fox Deportes and the zone. It's a lot. Listen, got a lot of good games. Kids. Heck yeah, buckle up because it, 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 we're, we're on this roller coaster. We really are. And uh, before we let you go, um, there was an announcement made yesterday. One of our favorite guy, honestly, he's just one of like the best human beings mm -hmm. ever. I know you would agree with me, Stephen Keel. Uh, Justin Morrow announcing that he is going to be retiring after this season. Um, the guy is just, he's just incredible. 11 years in the league, an MLS Cup winner with Toronto. Um, he, the work that he has done with the Black Players for Change as the executive director is uh, truly remarkable. He was the 2020 MLS Humanitarian of the Year. Again, just a superb yep. human being. And um, I, I, and I know you and, and everyone in MLS should, should celebrate what was a, a really incredible and remarkable career. Yeah, absolutely. What, what a career he's had. What a, uh, what a person he is. Anyone that's got a chance to interact with him and, and, and meet him off the field. Uh, he's a champion on the field. He's a champion off the field. So uh, congrats, Justin. Awesome career. Um, and best of luck in uh, retirement. But I, I have a feeling he'll... He's going to stay quite busy and, and I'm up to some some really great things. I think so. I think you're spot on there, Stephen Keel. Um, always a pleasure, buddy. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Enjoy all the soccer this weekend. And we will see you next week. See ya.